It was a pleasant Saturday afternoon, and my son Bill and I had been shopping. Bill had asked if he could have the car next weekend to go with a team to a town a hundred miles away. I hadn't said no, but I hadn't said yes either. You see, Bill had never before driven without me on such a long trip. Of course, I had no reason to doubt Bill's ability. He was a skillful driver, but it takes more than skill to drive a car safely. I wondered, did Bill know what it meant to drive defensively, to anticipate danger situations? For instance, just ahead was an intersection where drivers often become confused because the traffic lights are complicated. Would Bill count on other drivers to do the right thing? Or would he stay on the defensive? I soon found out. For suddenly, on our right, who had the right of way? What does it matter? The defensive driver expects trouble and drives so as to avoid it. That gave me an idea about that trip Bill wanted to take. I decided to give him a sort of test in defensive driving. We parked near a factory. On that Saturday afternoon, there weren't many people around. But I said to Bill, would there be any dangers around the factory if this were a weekday at quitting time? Sure, said Bill, because you never can tell what people will do when they're in a group. It's a good idea to avoid factories and office buildings at quitting time. Pick routes that don't take you past them if you can. If you can't, then be on the defensive. What are those girls going to do? Expect the unexpected. Of course, jaywalkers are a constant hazard any time, any place. Watch for them. If they won't look out for their own safety, you'll have to. Near schools, Bill said, you should look out for the same kinds of dangers. Slow down and stay especially alert. Drive the same way when you see children at play near the street. Warn them you're coming and take it easy, ready for any emergency. Well, Bill seemed prepared for dangers from pedestrians, but I wondered how he would react to other kinds of dangers. It wasn't long before I found out. When you hear a siren, pulling over and stopping is the defensive as well as the legal action to take. Bill knew that. Now a siren gives you warning that an emergency vehicle is coming. But I asked Bill about vehicles that don't give warning. If we were out on the highway, for instance, it could happen suddenly. Right away you begin slowing down, said Bill. Highway repair machinery and farm machinery go a lot slower than they appear to be going. And you stay behind until you're sure it's safe to pass. The same goes for a long trailer truck. Bill said the defensive driver knows that it takes extra time and distance to pass. So he makes allowance for it and passes only when he has time to spare. When you're behind a school bus, or see one coming toward you, remember that the bus will be stopping every so often, so you'll be ready to stop some distance away. Now, children are supposed to be clear of the road before the bus starts up again, but the defensive driver waits. He waits until he's sure it's safe to go ahead. Stay alert, anything can happen. When you want to pass a bicycle, warn the rider you're there. 
Remember, he may suddenly weave or fall, so give him plenty of room when you pass. Well, after the fire engine had passed, Bill pulled away from the curb. He had convinced me that he understood the hazards of special vehicles you're apt to meet on the road. Not far along, we came to a grade crossing, and I was happy to see Bill play it safe, even though we might have been able to make it across. A grade crossing is a real hazard. While we waited there, I questioned Bill about other kinds of road hazards the defensive driver ought to be prepared for. Bill thought immediately of signs that warn you about some of the hazards. Being alert for such signs is a part of defensive driving and acting on the warnings you receive. When the pavement narrows, you pick a safe time to move over and you slow down for that detour. Here's another sign. You see it in time because you're on the alert. If there's a car coming, and it seems that you're going to meet on that narrow bridge, you could speed up and try to beat him to it. But it's courteous and safer to slow down and let the other car go first. That's what Bill said. Then he added that not all road hazards are indicated by signs. The crest of a hill may hide a hazard you can't see, so you slow down a little and stay especially alert until you know what's ahead. The defensive driver never relies on luck. He drives on skill. During the few minutes we had waited for the train to pass, Bill had satisfied me that he was prepared for highway hazards. Soon though, we came up against another kind of hazard, a slow road hog. On a one-way street, this problem isn't too serious. But still, I was interested in seeing how Bill would handle this kind of obstruction. First, he signaled the driver that he wanted to pass. He was being courteous and safe, but the other driver wouldn't cooperate. So Bill checked his rear-view mirror to make sure no cars were about to pass him. Then, watching to see that the other car wouldn't swing out, he gave it wide clearance as he passed. In heavy traffic, switching lanes can be dangerous. That's why road hogs can be such hazards on the road. I was pleased with Bill's defensive driving, and I thought we might stop at a drive-in for some ice cream, my treat. By that time, I was almost convinced that Bill could manage alone. But the road hog Bill had passed reminded him of some other kinds of drivers that can be dangerous. For instance, he said, the student driver who's just learning. Since this driver is untrained, the defensive driver should expect the worst and not drive too close to him, but give him any brakes he can. Then there's the driver you see behind you, weaving in and out of traffic. He's getting closer. He's going to want to weave around you too. What's the defensive thing to do? Help him pass you. Slow down. Let him get away from you. Not only because it's the courteous thing to do, but because he's a hazard and dangerous to be near. By the time we finished our ice cream, I was convinced that Bill could safely handle the car alone on that trip next weekend. He had my permission. I was sure he would drive not only skillfully, but wisely and courteously. Being a defensive driver, Planning in advance to handle danger situations will help to keep him safe on streets and highways wherever he drives.